Hi, I'm Vicki Sjogren's Trooper from the channel Living with Sjogren's Disease. This video is focused on estrogen and the effects of it on our immune system. So this is information from what I've learned um, in nursing school, reading articles that are written by accredited individuals, rheumatologists, gynecologists, and studies that seemed credible. So estrogen is a hormone that brings about puberty, all those sexual changes and developments, but it also plays a major role in regulating our immune system. So changes in our estrogen level can really have the potential of affecting our immune system either to, to rev it up or not rev it up enough. The flip side of that is progesterone, another hormone. And progesterone slows down the immune system. So estrogen revs it up and progesterone calms it down. So estrogen is produced mainly in the ovaries and for men, the testicles. But it's also produced some in the adrenal glands, those little triangular glands that sit on top of our kidneys. But mainly it's produced in the ovaries, um, the years of ovulation. So once the period stops and um, we're just fully in menopause, then it is only produced in the adrenal glands. So we produce less of it because the adrenal glands don't produce as much. I found this fact interesting. There are more than one type of estrogens. So these various types work a little differently. And the type of estrogens that are produced and released from the adrenal glands are a little bit different from the ones that are released from the ovaries. So for me, that made sense as to um, why we could develop an autoimmune disease here specifically Sjogren's, um, <clears throat> differently before we're in menopause, and then also develop it after menopause when estrogen is lower. Because we tend to think of our immune system being way out of control, going, you know, stimulated so much that it goes bonkers and starts to attack us, our own tissues, and lead to systemic inflammation, like inflammation throughout the body. Um, but it can also happen when estrogen is lower, but it has a little bit of a different mechanism. So how does this estrogen get released from the ovaries? It turns out that our pituitary gland tells the thymus gland to tell the ovaries, okay, it's time to start putting out estrogen. And the cycle of the period cycle, estrogen continues to build and build and build and more and more is released. And during that time, more of that lining inside the uterus is getting thicker. And then suddenly the thymus tells the ovaries, okay, it's time to slow down on that. So women, on average, tend to have about five times more estrogen than men do. So with women having all this extra estrogen, so much more, triggering our immune system to go into action. And so that might be one reason why that diagnosis ratio between men, men and women is one to nine. So nine women for every one man because our estrogen level is higher. So one thing um, estrogen does in order to trigger the immune response is it sends out signals to another cell that tells um, the lymphocyte cells to spur into action. And there's three types of lymphocyte cells. And so all of these lymphocytes can be spurred into action. So what happens is the cell that triggers the lymphocytes into action, it also releases these tags that go throughout the body. And those tags look for anything that's not self. But when the immune system is really triggered and revved up, it can be out of control. And then those tags go and tag parts of us, like our lacrimal glands, salivary glands, um, and other glands throughout the body. And those tags attach to the cells in those glands 
and they don't they don't leave it. So then the lymphocytes they're out looking for those tags. And so it doesn't matter to them what the tag is on. Their job is just to attack what's tagged. So they're just out looking for those little red flags. And when they find it, they attack it, even if it's self. So there's supposed to be this balance between progesterone and estrogen. And so if there's too much estrogen, they're out of whack. They're out of balance. So you've got all this going on, triggering the immune system and not enough progesterone over here to calm it down. So lower estrogen can also create an issue. So after our period finally stops, like for good, that's when estrogen is only produced in the adrenal glands and the adrenal glands put out less of it. The lower um, estrogen level, like normal than what's average. Now, going lower too is a natural thing. Um, it's not necessarily considered a disease process, but there's potential for that lower um, estrogen to trigger a different type of lymphocyte, which I believe is killer T cells, T cells and killer T cells. And they react a little bit differently when they're stimulated, but they still end up attacking self tissues when they're out of control. And I think this could also be why um, a lot of women aren't diagnosed with Sjogren's until menopause. Um, once menopause hits, suddenly they start having these symptoms and you know, they go to the doctor, say, I'm not feeling good. This has been going on. And so they do labs and they, well, your inflammation is up. Let's send you to a rheumatologist. They do more labs and they say, well, I think you have Sjogren's. So let's do more labs. Um, and then they begin treatment for that. So how do we kind of stave off some of those effects of the lower estrogen, either when we're younger going through menopause or after menopause. For me, I began to try and eat more um, plant estrogens. Um, I took supplements that had plant estrogens in them. That's when I started hormone replacement, which was a combination of estrogen and progesterone. And oh man, I felt so much better. Um, unfortunately, my periods came back. Um, this was in my early 40s, though, and I really needed that estrogen. I needed that cycle, and it definitely made me feel better. But then about three years later, um, three or four years later, um, studies were coming out showing that the estrogen replacement um, medications led to a higher incidence of breast cancer and heart disease. So my primary care and I decided mm, maybe it's time to stop the hormone replacement because I have breast cancer in my family and um, other types of cancers too. So it just seemed like too much of a risk. Um, and that's about the time I started going more downhill. My periods completely stopped. And at that point, I was considered officially um, early menopause. And they called it ovarian failure. And that led me into more active Sjogren's. Caused a lot more problems. Um, problems with my eyes, my mouth, my central nervous system, my skin, my gas, my gut. And so during my 50s, I really wasn't feeling so great at all. Um, that's when my immune system attacked my left eye. Um, and all these, these issues were going on. And I just kind of progressively went down, down, down. Eventually, I had to completely quit working. And that was about 57. I just was a mess. You know, was this all fully because of estrogen, low estrogen, and the different ways the immune system is triggered, I'm, I'm really not sure. Some of it could just be the natural effects of menopause, but everybody's different. 
some women are in menopause and they have all the energy in the world. My grandmother, she, she would walk throughout the entire small town that she lived in just to go to the grocery store. And she lived to be 101. Just a very dynamic person. And she did have RA and she also suffered from bursitis. Um, but she still had this ability to be dynamic. Everybody ages a little differently. And so even those of us who have developed an autoimmune disease, um, it's important to, for us to be aware of our estrogen level and men too, because there's that one out of 10 um, incidence of them developing Sjogren's disease. So it's not always um, the situation of us having five times more amount of estrogen. Although that greater degree of it does leave us a lot more vulnerable. I apologize for this video being longer than five to seven minutes. <clears throat> I do wish you uh, a healthy, happy day where your pain is lower and you're more able to get out and move around. Today we have sunshine. It's still a little chilly, but we've got that sunshine. And even though I'm in pain, I decided to go out and walking. It wasn't a long walk. Um, and the sunshine, to feel that on my face, to breathe the fresh air and see the blue skies was worth it because I knew that I could rest afterwards, use my heat pack. So I hope that you have sunshine and all the good feels that come along with that. Um, and so long for now. I'll see you in the next video.